The vice president earlier referred to, as part of what he thinks is an accomplishment, um, the, the president's trade war with China. You lost that trade war. You lost it. What ended up happening is because of a so-called trade war with China, America lost 300,000 manufacturing jobs. Farmers have experienced bankruptcy because of it. We are in a manufacturing recession because of it. And when we look at where this administration has been, there are estimates that by the end of the term of this administration, they will have lost more jobs than almost any other presidential administration. Also, in contrast to northern Sudan, the nature here is green and lush with mountains, valleys, and of course, the stunning Nile River. With a population of more than 6 million, Luanda is the world's most populous Portuguese-speaking capital city. The city is on Angola's Atlantic coast. Its current renaissance is a truly inspiring success story. In Eritrea is a country smaller than Oklahoma sitting on the Horn of Africa, bordering Sudan, Ethiopia, Djibouti, and the Red Sea not far away from Yemen. About 5 million people call this land home, which gained independence from Ethiopia on the exact day I was born, May 24th, 1991. China welcomes the signing of a comprehensive peace agreement with South Sudan's rivals and will continue to support the country's peace process. So today I want to speak directly to you, the people of Sudan and South Sudan. In your lives you've endured extraordinary hardship. 
You carry in your hearts the memory of family and friends you've lost. But in recent years, against great odds, you've made remarkable progress. Chinese President Xi Jinping on Sunday met with Angola's President Jair Lorenzo ahead of the 2018 Beijing Summit of the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, or FOCAC, calling for the efforts to jointly promote the strategic partnership to a new level. What's the sign of goodwill that the president is waiting for? The cessation of hostilities. The part of him. The part of him. Ending the hostility from your part. Who's going to take the lead? The presence of occupation forces makes it impossible for any normalization of relationships. Jump to uh, somewhere and say I've achieved something. These were the real challenge, and the real challenge was, uh, do you have the resources for doing it? You may aspire to achieve some goals, but definitely you need resources to do that. So will uh, this tension between China and the U.S. affect China's trade relations with Africa? And the effect will go beyond U.S. and China. Definitely Africa and other continents in the world we have, it will, be neg will be negatively impacted. It's only those who have, will serve as alternative to a counterpart country that will benefit from all of this. So Africa, if not, if the, uh, if it's not very careful, might also take part in sudden price increases and reduction in investment across the globe. There is a popular African adage that goes, when elephants fight, it is the grass that suffers. Now, though Africa was not the direct target of the U.S.-China trade war, and has remained largely absent from the discourse, the reality is African nations are now facing a mixture of opportunity and harm to their economies. And here's why. Now, these trade tariffs have typically led to significant drops in commodity prices, local currencies, as well as major equity exchanges on on the continent, but Africa could also feel that commodities export gap left by the U.S. in China itself. It means that the oil production will resume in the areas that where we had shut down. The oil uh, production increase will now be uh, increased. Uh, because we used to produce uh, 350,000 barrels a day in South Sudan. Angola's crude oil exports have fluctuated over the last year, but Angola was the second biggest supplier of oil to China in the first five months of 2017.
According to the U.S. government's Bureau of Economic Analysis, the manufacturing sector accounted for over $2.2 trillion of U.S. GDP, or 11.6% of the total, in 2017. Regarding jobs, the manufacturing sector employed nearly 12.5 million people, or 8.5% of the U.S. workforce. Foreign Direct Investment, or FDI, refers to a long-term investment by an investor in an enterprise in another economy, resulting in lasting interest with significant influence over the overseas enterprise. FDI typically occurs through mergers and acquisitions or setting up of business operations by the investor in a foreign economy. The investor is known as the direct investor, while the overseas enterprise is known as the direct investment enterprise. For example, Hi my friends, in this video we learn how to start an import-export business. If you want to learn import-export business, watch full video. This is 8 steps to start your import-export business. Number 1. Select your business name and set up a website and blog. Without a website or blog, you can have a networked import-export business. Get yourself a platform that allows you to develop a presence online and grow your business beyond your wildest imagination. Number 2. Pick a product to import or export. Market research is an essential step in the export process. With close to 200 countries in the world to export to, you want to make sure that you're targeting the right ones. Number 3. Find the right market. Wait. Before you shift into high gear, you must determine whether there really is a market for your product or service. Number 4. Source a supplier. Once you have a likely import or export product in mind, learn everything there is to know about it. If you were its creator, how would you improve it? Go to a manufacturer and suggest product improvements to turn a mediocre product into something slightly ahead of its time. Your suggestions might mean the difference between a Sony Walkman and an Apple iPod. Number 5. Price the product. The business model for an import-export business is based on two critical elements within the international sales operation. One. Volume number of units sold. 2. Commission on that volume. The more you sell, the more you make. Number 6. Have you decided what items you will sell, or produce, or what services, you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan, based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need, to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers?